about 1986 or 87, uh, what was happening in Haringey was attracting central government attention and in particular certain leaders of the Conservative Party seized on this in part to push their own moral agenda but also because they were out to crack down on local government autonomy and independence and push for far greater central control as well as certain policies uh, such as privatisation. In this context uh, there were a number of speeches, for instance, Margaret Thatcher um, accusing Haringey Council, I think, of teaching children that they had a right to be gay, uh, if I remember rightly. And um, to the horror of a lot of activists, we found that a notion that had been put forward uh, and I think initially looked as if it wouldn't be going anywhere of passing a law to prevent local authorities from promoting homosexuality in inverted commas was going to be taken up by government and this became the notorious section 28. Um, so by early 1988 people across the England were mobilizing uh, against this threat to progress in terms of LGBT acceptance um, by a law that was designed to outlaw some of what was going on within local government, including the, um, the teaching in schools of the acceptability of homosexuality as a pretended family relationship. Though the wording ended up being so ambiguous and in some ways garbled that when the law was finally passed, it was never actually used to stop anyone doing anything that they were doing. So some councils carried on with their equal opportunities policies unopposed, but what it did do was impose a kind of chill, especially across the educational sector, um, that affected a generation of young people after mine. So while there was a lot of negativity around when I was growing up, uh, during that period of 1979 to 82, for instance, when I was uh, at university, um, here at University College London, and in the 1980s, what then happened um, was that the progress that had been made, the, uh, the, the starting up of youth groups and services and so on, got largely rolled back for young people growing up in at the end of the 80s and in the 1990s and at the very beginning of the 2000s uh, until uh, Section 28 was finally repealed. So you were at the forefront of that battle against Section 28. So I think I've seen there was a picture of you sort of at the front of one of the marches at the lecture, at the talk that you gave last yes. year. You were very much... Well, I was very much active locally within um, Haringey and um, I suppose that the Blackness Women and Gay Centre project played its part. Um, I wasn't one of the, the key figures nationally, in, though I was, I suppose, involved in some of the, the action taking par part um, across the, the country on this. Uh, but quite a lot of people were involved in campaigning. And even though we didn't win on that occasion, what it did do, I think, was increase um, LGBT visibility and um, perhaps helped some people to find their confidence as activists, including um, black and minority ethnic LGBT people at the time. So the LGBT community now, how have the issues changed from back then? So from the yeah. 80s? Yes, yeah, so th things have changed a lot since the 1980s. Um, for instance, there is now a framework of legal protection against discrimination that would have been hard to imagine actually when I was um, uh, at university. Mm -hmm.